Good morning. Welcome to our morning with Sacred Silence, sponsored by the Interfaith Center and the Arkansas House of Prayer. I'm your host, Sophia Saeed. I'm the Executive Director of the Interfaith Center. We are a nonprofit committed to reducing the fear and hatred among world religions, and we do that by providing education, promoting dialogue, and doing relationship building opportunities between people of different faiths. Along with me is Reverend Stephanie Fox from Arkansas House of Prayer, who is our technology host for today. Arkansas House of Prayer is an interfaith haven set apart in nature, dedicated to contemplative prayer, meditation, and quiet, where all are welcome. Our sessions are held on second Tuesday of every month till the month of May. My two colleagues today and I will talk about the practice of silence from our perspective spiritual journeys. We will start with Reverend Susan Sim Smith, who is a psychotherapist and an Episcopal priest, founder of both these nonprofits, Arkansas House of Prayer and the Interfaith Center. Susan finds dream, silence, and meditation as her deepest ways to connect with the divine. And Susan will teach for about eight to 10 minutes. And right after that, I'm going to teach from a Muslim and Islamic perspective about silence. Right after me, my friend Annabelle, who is Jewish, will be speaking from a Jewish perspective. Annabelle serves on the board of Congregation Bani Israel. Annabelle also is the first woman who became who was elected to the Supreme Court of Arkansas in 1997. She is a pr practitioner and teacher of Musa, the Jewish mystical tradition, which is a virtues-based approach to Jewish ethics and character development. Right after her teaching, Annabelle will lead us into meditation. We will sit in silence for 12 to 15 minutes. She is also going to bring us out of silence and lead the 15 minutes of question and answer session. All our sessions are recorded for the benefit of those students who want to join us but are not able to today. They're available on YouTube for uh, future viewing. So I request you all to keep your mics muted just for the recording. But if you have a burning question or a comment during the teaching time, or when we are sitting in the silence, you can always go to the chat box and put your question or comment there. And we will be talking about it. We will be taking it in the Q&A session. Similarly, since the sessions are recorded and you, if you do not wish to be seen during your meditation time or during any time, you're always welcome to switch your camera off and that's how your face will not be displayed. Well, with all that said, it's time to start the workshop. And we will start with Reverend Susan Sim Smith first. So Susan, here you go. Good morning. This is an exciting topic, kindness in silence. From today's New York Times is a quote from the irreducible William Parker, composer and free jazz bassist. When you play music in this world, you're actually stepping into another world. No matter what's happening with you, whether you owe 10 months rent or you're dealing with some kind of mental anxiety or hardship, the music takes over and you step into the other world. When, when water vibrates, it turns into steam and changes properties and appearance. When it changes, you step into another place and there's a vision of a corridor of light you walk down the corridor and at the end there's a door and behind that door are the secrets of life. For composer William Parker, it is music. And I love music too, as a way into silence and a way of joy and dancing. And that corridor of light is available to all of us through our practice of silence. Jesus was the role model of silence for those of us that are Christian and the role model of kindness. I want to talk about three aspects of kindness today. Kindness in our inner and outer talk, kindness in justice, and kindness as merging with a fountain of God's energy. 
First, most of you on this call have either had enough therapy, been around long enough, or read enough to know that we each have an inner critic. And the point that I want to make about the inner critic, kindness, and silence is that the inner critic is almost always triggered by fear. So you get afraid or I get afraid of something. That fear is driven by a belief system. So we have an idea in our head that triggers us to be afraid and we feel either critical of ourselves or somebody else. A fast track ticket out of criticism of others and criticism of ourselves is silence. Silence transforms our anxieties and calms us so that we're not so hard on ourselves and so hard on others. And in the silence, occasionally, some of our belief systems that are distorted belief systems, like I should always show up on time, I should never be late, whatever the belief system is that triggers your fear, that triggers your criticism and moves you away from kindness. Silence can bring up belief systems that are distorted and help you correct them. And silence can move you toward a type of calmness that we all need. So silence is a fertile bed for transforming the criticism of yourself that is unkind and the criticism of others that is unkind. Second, kindness is a form of justice and justice is a form of kindness. Some of us in this room are called to speak the truth in love and speak truth to power and speak love to power. Other people in our families, our communities, or our society may not see us as very kind when we are speaking truth to power, or as Jesus said, when we are speaking the truth in love. Deep silence, and in my opinion, possibly only deep silence, can guide us into a kind of wisdom that can let us know, are we one of the people on this earth assigned to speak the truth in love related to justice? Some of you on this call have unique assignments from the divine, and we're all supposed to be telling the truth in love, but some of us are particularly assigned to justice. And justice is a form of kindness. Without silence, how are you going to gain the wisdom and the calm and the love to speak truth to power? Silence drops you into a level of wisdom and guidance and calmness that allows you to move from a healthy center. In the Hindu scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita, a leader is asked to have the rod of chastisement to restore the wicked, cherish the honest, defeat evil, and enjoy the earth. Now, that's not very Dr. Spockian, but it's deeply into all the religious traditions that justice is a part of kindness, deep kindness. And it is silence and the wisdom and love found in prayer that allows our tough and unpopular stances with our family, our community, or our society to be rooted in kindness. Finally, the most profound silence allows us to merge with the fountain of kindness. As you know, in the beginning stages of meditation, there's a lot of scrambling around to learn technique, and that's important. And once you have found a technique or two or three that take you into that fountain of kindness, the technique merges with you. And it's not uh, mechanical. It's part of who you are. It's part of how you approach the divine. And as you approach the divine, you become connected to your truest self, which is kindness. And you become connected to the divine, who is kindness. And all of a sudden, the technique and the mechanical nature of meditation vanish. And you, are, you have walked into that corridor of light that the musician describes. 
and you are not striving anymore. You're not trying. You're not anxious. You're not wondering, how do I meditate? How do I find kindness? You are kindness and you are held by kindness and you were born through kindness. Amen and blessings to you on your journeys of meditation and silence. Thank you so much, Susan. And thank you for bringing music in because um, there are many of us who use music or who listen to music right before we, uh, right when we're, when we're seeking silence or right before we are ready to drop into that deeper levels of silence, music helps us enormously. So I'm glad you brought it up. So last time I talked about um, silence and how it helps us cultivate a deeply grateful heart. And today I'll say a few words about how silence helps us discover our own compassionate core or the kindness within us as the theme of the day is kindness. So there is a saying of our prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in which he says, or in which God speaks in first person saying that, I was a hidden treasure and I wished to be known. So I created the two worlds in order that my treasures of loving kindness and generosity may be revealed to you. So loving kindness and generosity are two of the greatest attributes of God, which he claimed himself that he wanted to reveal to humankind or to the universe. And they're also the best virtues or qualities of heart and mind that we can cultivate in our own self because they're directly coming from God. They are, um, they are the best attributes of God. Kindness or compassion, as I think of it, is how we share our aliveness with the people around us. They're the foundation of building a more humane world. So loving kindness means that we are willing to participate in the suffering of others to an extent that we forget our own suffering behind. It means reaching out to others with care. It means identifying with the homeless person on the street, identifying with a depressed teenager who is just about to commit suicide, with the helpless trees in the Amazon forest, with the frightened animals in the test labs, with the washed off Syrian refugee child on the shores of our nation. And also with our own tortured feelings of anger, pain or hatred that we harbor in our own psyches. So loving kindness or compassion is the quivering of our own hearts when we have allowed ourselves to be touched by the pain of others. And if we use this rubric, which I just gave you, then even the idea of a foe or an enemy diminishes, vanishes away, and it is replaced by the notion of someone who needs our love and our understanding. So how do we get to that place of loving kindness, of compassion, the place where kindness and compassion, which are the highest attributes of God himself, they find home? How do we discover them within our own selves? So our mystics and our teachers, our spiritual gurus, they tell us that God speaks to us in silence through our hearts. And since kindness and compassion are the attributes of God and he resides within our hearts in silence, then kindness is also learned and cultivated actively from inside out. Many of the wisdom traditions in the world claim that if there is internal noise within us, then it hinders us from reaching to our highest values like kindness and compassion. Pope Francis in his book called The Power of Silence says that if there is interior noise, Within us, it makes it impossible for us to welcome anything or anyone. Our teachers on spiritual path tell us that only when we can remove this interior noise and only when we can present, 
uh, feel the presence of silence inside that we can activate a kind heart, a compassionate heart, not only for others, but also for our own selves too. But definitely as a wonderful response to others who need it. So if I look at um, my scripture, there is this beautiful story of the birth of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is also a role model for Muslims as a symbol of kindness and compassion. Peace be upon him. So in the story of his birth, when Mary conceived Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, she left the temple, the community, the place where she was living and praying. And she went away to have the child. She had the baby Jesus. And after that, when she regained her energies and she was ready to come back, she was finally commanded by God to return to her place, to return to her people. Mary was nervous, of course. She was frightened. She was scared. After all, she was an unmarried virgin from the family of noble scholars who have been away for a long time and now returning home with a child. But God, who is the most wise and all-knowing, said to her, Mary, put your heart at ease. And when you see any people say, I have vowed silence to the most compassionate one. So I'm not talking to anyone today. Think about it. I have vowed silence to the most compassionate one. So I'm not talking to anyone today. And that's how Mary, peace be upon her, returned to her people, carrying baby Jesus, who looked at her and they were in shock and they say, oh, Mary, you have certainly done a horrible thing. Oh, sister of Aaron, your father was not an indecent man. Your mother was not an unchaste woman. What have you done? But Mary hold on. She held on to her vow of silence and didn't say anything by the command of Allah. And she refrained from speaking to anybody or anyone for a particular time until her child was ready and he, Jesus Christ, began speaking and defended her mother. There is a lot of wisdom in God's command to Mary and it must be understood. Mary needed strength to go back to her tribe and to introduce baby Jesus, her miraculous child. But instead of giving her miracles, as a form of strength, God equipped her with the gift of silence, the strength of silence, which helped her remain kind in the face of all the insults that were being hurled at her and at the baby. So silence can truly be a force of good for all of us, just like Mary, who spent most of her life in silence and in prayer. And it's especially powerful when people, especially the people who are lacking good intention and will and people who seek division or violence and destruction, silence is the best response and the best form of prayer that helps us connect to that deepest core of, our, core of ourselves, compassion, which comes directly from God. Silence gives strength to Mary. And I hope we all can find those those exquisite moments of silence that allow our hearts to transform into a deeply compassionate one like Mary's. Thank you all, salam, peace and shalom. And I will move the mic to Annabelle with this. Thank you. I am, I was looking forward to this particular meditation practice because I think we all need it now so much. Uh, there is so much divisiveness and I want each of us to take this meditation practice that I'm going to go through and I'm going to really give you plenty of time to internalize loving kindness, compassion through meditation. Now, loving kindness has a two-edged sword in a way, and that's kind of strange to say, 
Loving kindness, as earlier mentioned, can involve speaking truth to power. But it can also, in, in a more um, at home way, involve uh, correcting a loved one. Um, and uh, I know many of us have raised children. And so we would have to, through loving kindness, uh, give some, uh, we call it tough love. Um, and um, it, it is interesting. I mean, we are not our children's friends. We are their parents. And so we have a, a responsibility to them, just as we have a responsibility to everyone else, including ourselves. So I'm going to go through what this visualization practice is, and then we will do it. Loving kindness or compassion meditation involves each of us visualizing a person and repeating silently a series of compassionate wishes for the well being of that person, such as, may you be content, may you be healthy, may you be safe, may you live your life with ease. You get similar, you know, so this isn't just about for someone you love, a beloved, but it can be repeated and giving the same well wishes to someone who has benefited you, a benefactor, to other family and friends about whom one feels close and positive emotions, to people one finds difficult or challenging to deal with. And finally, to all beings, all sentient beings. Now, compassion for oneself is an important trait to develop as well. Uh, the fact of the matter is we're our own worst critics. And so a loving kindness meditation may begin with well wishes for oneself. This practice can cultivate stronger feelings of generosity and benevolence to others, kindness, and less harsh self-critical judgments. As compared to other types of practices which deal with focus and self-awareness, this practice does not train the mind this loving kindness meditation practice trains the heart. So what I'm going to ask you to do is get yourself in a good, solid, stable position. Uh, first, we'll go into silence um, in order to clear out everything from our consciousness. And as you're going into that, I want you to think about whether you want to do it for yourself, this practice, or for a loved one, or for a family member who may be in need, um, or for all beings. You pick, you choose. And what I am going to do through the practice is after we get into silence, I am going to verbalize these blessings once or twice. And then I am going to be quiet and let you verbalize them internally. So now if you will, either close your eyes or 
lift them downward. Let us take our few breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Be sure your body, you're totally aware of your body, starting with your feet solidly on the earth, the ground, and coming up your calves. Just focus on each part of your body coming up to your thighs. into your torso, your chest, where your heart is, into your, going down to your arms and out to your fingers, feeling your presence your total presence. Coming up into your face. Relax your shoulders and your face. And we'll spend a, maybe a minute in this total silence before I begin the blessing. May you be content. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you live your life with ease. May you be content. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you live your life. as you're visualizing the loved one, yourself, a friend, an acquaintance, or someone with whom you have difficulty or all the universe of 
of sentient beings. Continue saying these words. May you be content. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you live your life with ease.
I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> That's jarring. <laughs> Whoa, jarred me. I'm so sorry. I was in the middle of it too. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Well, what I'd like to do now, if you'll take a, a minute or two to let your heart stop pounding. Um, Mm. is to open up and um, please feel free to unmute yourself. And I'd like to kind of get your, your input on and your uh, feelings about this meditation. Um, I... I find that it opens my heart um, and brings me into connection with others as opposed to being alone, feeling alone. And these blessings are like prayers. So in a sense, you're praying for this person or these beings. So please feel free to unmute yourself and raise your hand if you'd like to share your feelings and thoughts. Christine. Thank you. This is amazing meditation uh, tool. I'm I'm really, I can't really go express how it affected me, but the person that I chose to, to center this on, it was very close to me, a, a very dear family person, um, very close, my son. And <clears throat> with some concerns and some burdens I've had about him for a long, long time now. And so I focused on him and at first, I was, I was really struck by the fact that at first, when I first started to, to do this practice, it was a feeling of anxiety and just, you know, just concentration and sort of stressful. And the, the more I went deeper into it, the more I opened, my heart opened to realize that I was in concert with God on this. And I was not doing it myself. It was being done through me. And um, I, it turned into such a, I, <laughs> or difficult to find a word, it turned into such a communal feeling with the spirit, as if my spirit were, at, were requesting the spirit of the Holy One to interact with his spirit and to convey our, our wishes, not just my wishes or my hopes for, for him, but the entire divine hope that I hold in my heart for him. Eh, that's my best I can do to explain it. <laughs> well, you're not alone. Uh, I, my son was in my, my visualization as well. He is, has uh, addiction problems. And so I felt that I had Allah, God, Adonai with me. So yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. Anybody else want to open? Yes, Ron. There's definitely a group energy that I thoroughly enjoy. So you could feel all of that positive energy flowing. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, Sister Deborah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's a okay. uh 
really Ron's comment uh, prompted me to share what what came to mind. Uh, the experience was was refreshing and, and renewing um, and relieving <laughs> for my spirit. And toward the end, I had uh, it's a it's a it's a story from the Christian scriptures that just came to mind powerfully. And um, it's the story where uh, there's a a man who's paralyzed, and uh, they want to get this man to Jesus to, for healing. And there's too many people in the room. <laughs> it's too crowded. So you can imagine what that image can kind of be <laughs> within our own hearts and minds, too crowded. Uh, but what struck me was the story. They literally, they go up on the roof and they, they lower him down through the roof. And all of a sudden that took on another whole image of, of, of going deeply, deeply, deeply within, but it's the, it's the, it's the communal effort of an intention of the community who care for him that that allow him to to actually touch and be touched by the divine because they the story goes on to say he's lowered through the roof and uh of course there he encounters jesus and the healing takes place and you know jesus often says you know it's your faith that healed you it's your faith of your community that healed you so that that was a powerful powerful um story that came to me as a result of of your invitation to this meditation so thank you thank you sister deborah anybody else want to raise their hand and unmute i don't want to cut anybody off if they have the desire but i also don't want to force you <laughs> to share if you would like to keep this close to home. I am, um, we had a similar, we had a workshop this Sunday, some of you may have been there, where when you join with the divine in a constant conversation, um, you're enveloped by kindness and compassion. And I, that brings to meditation for me, a wonderful bath of love. And in this time where we know there is so much fear and we're not immune to that. We have it too. Um, I wanted to read a poem uh, for closing. And then after I do that, um, Stephanie will put up, um, I think on the chat, right? A link for you to go to and give us, it's a survey, very short, on your input. We need to know how, whether we are, you know, meeting your needs, whether you have suggestions. Um, this is a communal group. I mean, we are, we are one and we are all made in God's image. So we need your, your input and your thoughts and feelings. So before I do that, um, I'm going to read a poem. You may have heard it before, but I think it, poetry can be repeated again and again, and you will feel something different. We are now, believe it or not, almost one year into the pandemic. I mean, if you started really counting about when it first started, we are past one year. But in terms of our country's sense of isolation, 
and fear. Um, we're, we're a little under one year. So I'd like to read a poem by Lynn Ungar. She wrote it at the beginning of the pandemic and she called it pandemic. And it really brings to mind this compassion and loving kindness that will help us continue this journey because we know it is not over yet. We are still in the midst and must be patient. So if you wanna close your eyes, fine. If you wanna just have your eyes open, here is her poem, Pandemic. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly when we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. Amen and amen. So I wish you the blessings as we go forth today. May you be content. May you be healthy. May you be safe. And may you live this day with ease. Amen. And now, if you will honor us by going to the chat and clicking in to the link and filling out your survey. And when you have done that, you can silently exit. <laughs>